You are listening to The Gateway Church, located in Ferrisburg, Michigan. You can learn more about us by visiting thegateway.church or like and follow us on Facebook, where you can watch full services, keep up with all that is going on, and get connected. Well, this morning, we're going to conclude our series that we've called Better Together. And Better Together has been a resounding idea, and we've just said every week that some things are just better together. Some things are meant to go together. And help me out, like salt and... No, not vinegar. Salt and pepper. Thank you. How about bread and... Well, come, you guys, don't be messing with me. What, what, not you, Jess. You, you said it right. Other people are saying different things. What, what goes with a knife and? Thank you. Pen and? Hammer and? Needle and? You guys got it. Bacon and? Shoes and? Here's one for my mother-in-law. Arts and? There you go. And PP and? No, 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 no. Pastor Ben and Jessica. Come on. There you go. Some things are just better together. Thanks. You can leave that up there for a while if you want. No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> we are better together. In church, this has been a series about people. It's been about you and me and thinking about the lakeshore where we live and within our families and within our schools and our sports teams and the people at our work, the people we rub shoulders with in our neighborhoods. We are better when we are together. And every week in the series, we've suggested that uh, it is harder to live in community than probably at any other time in history. People are isolated, and isolation is dangerous. But if we work hard to be together with a few key relationships, it is better. It will help you fight against loneliness. It will hi- help you fight against spiritual drift, which is a real thing. The encouragement we've been making is to live in community, live as God intended, and we want to do that together. And if we do choose to live and work this way, it will be better. It'll be better. There'll be, there'll be more favor and more wisdom and more influence and more territory to take. I believe your finances will be better. Your marriages will be better. Your kids uh, growing up will be better. Your friendships will be better. Uh, better opportunities, better resources. And all of this, when we think of this together, it roots really for me in our key verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Would you say these first few phrases with me? It says we, or it says two are better than one. Say that with me. Two are better than one. Why is that? Because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will, right, lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone and when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Church, we're better together. And there are three types of relationships, three types of people that we should have in our lives. And this is for every single one of us. If we're going to live at our best, we all need a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy in our lives. And a Paul is that mentor, coach, someone who builds, pours into our life. A Barnabas is that associate, it's a friend, someone to collaborate with, kind of to walk shoulder to shoulder with. And a Timothy is that apprentice, right? Someone that we can p- pass our knowledge, pass our wisdom on to. And in the last two weeks, we've talked about Paul and Barnabas. We've unpacked the need that we need to be poured into because we are leaky vessels. And some of you might remember that message. And we need to also walk shoulder to shoulder with others. We need each other. And today, we're going to talk about pouring our own lives into others. We all need a Timothy in our lives. We need an apprentice. And I know that we've not uh, sugarcoated this. This series has been in conjunction with our launching of small groups, which start tonight. And this week, we'll be uh, rolling out all of our small groups. And there is one of our small group leaders that has taken this message that I'm about to preach 
to heart and has been a Timothy and is pouring into others. And I've asked Dorothy Peterson to come and to share her story. And let's give her a big hand. Come on, Dorothy. And uh, I appreciate Dorothy so much and uh, your creativity and your minds are about to be blown. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me. There you go. Well, good morning. Uh, It's a delight to be here and to share with you about Connect Groups and my experience in small groups. Now, I have been in small groups for over 30 years. That's a lot of small groups. So I went, where do I start? Well, sometimes the best place to start is at the beginning. So I'm going to share with you my very first experience in a small group and how it changed my life forever. Hallelujah. Well, once upon a time, now if something happened over 30 years ago, you can say once upon a time. So once upon a time, I was a single mom. My kids were six and eight. And I did not like being a single mom, not at all. So I decided I needed a husband. Well, where would I look? Well, I met my first husband in the bar, and that didn't work out so well, so I didn't want to go there. Um, I lived in Utah at the time, and Mormons were quite plentiful. But, you know, they have this idea that when women go to heaven, they're eternally pregnant. No, 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 no. That was not for me at all. So where do I look? Uh, Well, it so happened that I saw an ad about a Christian singles group. Now, this was back in the day when churches were just starting to have adult singles and They really didn't know what to do with them, so they took and put them all in a small group and said, here, you figure it out. So um, I found out where the meeting was. It was in a town next to me, and I got up all my courage. You know, desperate people do desperate things. So I said, this is going to be a place to find a husband. You know, and this is a true story, absolutely true story, and a way to I went. Now, I didn't know if I was going to like it, if they'd like me, how this was going to work out. At the time, I was in a very small, conservative, mainline denomination. I didn't know anything about a personal relationship with Jesus. Um, I'd never even heard of such a thing. So off I go. And what I found was amazing. These people took me in. They prayed for me. They were very compassionate. We ate together and did things together, went places. They prayed for me. I'm pretty sure they figured out that I wasn't saved, so they prayed for me. And uh, we had a great time. Uh, And that's what really Connect Groups are all about, meeting together, learning about Jesus, encouraging one another, and praying for each other. And that's what we did. Now, one day we decided we were going to a revival, and this was at one of the sponsoring churches. And the speaker was someone who had lived a very rebellious lifestyle. Now, I could relate to that. And he told about how he had given his life to the Lord and God had forgiven him. And I thought, if God could forgive him, then God could forgive me. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it it was all because of the group. They talked about Jesus all the time, like they knew him or something. And and it changed my life and my attitude. There is more of Jesus out there. And Holy Spirit, too. And you can find that through a Connect group. Um, So I really want to encourage you to get involved in one of the Connect groups. There's lots of them, and I think Pastor's going to talk about that a little later. Uh, I do the happy hour group on Tuesday mornings. Um, We'd love to have you. It's a great group. It's a women's group, uh, but we would love to have you come to that because we are all better together. Amen. We believe it. We believe it. Nice job. Just straight down. 
You got it. Thanks, Dorothy. <laughs> I love it. Dorothy is a real treasure around here. Amen. See, this series about being better together is really a series about discipleship. It's about growing together. Matthew 28, 19, and 20 says that uh, to go and to make disciples of all nations. He was talk- Jesus was talking to his disciples, but he's also talking to us in this season for us to go and make disciples. It says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then verse 20, teaching them, pouring into them, right, to observe all that I have commanded you. So Jesus poured into his disciples, and he expected them to pour into others and to continue that on and on. Now let's just make the distinction that there is a difference up from being discipled, right, someone pouring into you, and making disciples and pouring into someone else. See, discipleship is at the core of investing in someone else's life. That's why we need a Paul, a Barnabas, and Timothy. And I asked, Bar- uh, uh, no, not Dorothy, Bonnie, to help me with a little illustration that will help us that we need a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy in our life. Someone pouring into our lives. We need someone and that we could be a Barnabas or a Timothy. And then we need people to walk shoulder to shoulder. And then also to, we need to pour into others. And the neat thing about this little diagram is that the Timothy becomes the Paul and it happens over and over again. I like the idea that we're all growing as disciples. And here's a better way to say it, that as a disciple of Jesus, we must pursue a Paul. We talked about that the first week, someone to walk with, maybe an older or uh, um, older man or woman. We need to be a Barnabas. That was the key last week. And again, to walk, run with shoulder to shoulder. And we need to train up a Timothy. Invest in someone else. We all need a Timothy. And I love that, that uh, Paul was a perfect example of this in Scripture. And that this really series has been kind of tailor-made, and we've studied the, the life of Paul. And in the life of Paul, uh, we see that he had a mantra for his own life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, he would say, follow my example as I follow Christ. In the uh, ESV, it says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. And the idea here is that it was a lifestyle of Paul. In regards to Paul and Timothy in particular, they were close, right? They spent years together. Together. And, uh, and in fact, uh, it was an older and a younger man, and so it was almost a father son type relationship. We see that in Philippians chapter 2. Look what it says it says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Uh, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him. There's no one like Timothy, is what he's saying. He says, who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth. And I love this next phrase, how as a son with a father, he has served me in the gospel. He says, I hope, therefore, to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. There's two things to note here. Number one, Timothy was a great student, right? He was a willing student to be willing to be poured into. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago. We all need a Paul pouring into our lives. But Paul also models a trustworthy teacher, someone pouring out, right? And so we become the Paul to pour into a Timothy. And this is not just an example of Scripture and say, okay, this is good. That was good for Paul and Timothy or Paul and Barnabas. No, this is a model for every single one of us that's meant to be duplicated over and over and over. Pouring yourself into a Timothy is not just a good idea. It's a command from the Great Commission, which we read, Matthew 28. In the idea of working in the trenches, training up a protege or two, it's humbling. And I do understand, I get it, that we only can give what Jesus allows us to give and kind of work through us. And that's exactly what Paul did for Timothy. 
This week, I asked a question to myself as I was studying. I said, well, what did Paul really do for Timothy? And I think we get a clue when you read First and Second Timothy. I took some serious time this week reading through First and Second Timothy, kind of line by line, and I made notes. I got pages of notes. It, can I just share with you some of the highlights, the ideas? Paul invested in Timothy with Scripture, with doctrine, with practical teaching, with lessons learned, and a lot of encouragement. All stuff that Paul had to offer with Jesus, of course, at his side. And it didn't stop there. It wasn't like, well, we're, I'm going to pour into you and that's it. No. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he, Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, you then, my child, you then, Timothy, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus and what you have learned or heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others as well. There's a multiplication where Paul put into Timothy and Timothy put into others that would put into others. And here we are today over and over and over. And I do understand that there are excuses that we can all make up in our heads saying, hmm, I'm not so sure my life could be poured out into someone that it would make any difference. Or you'd say, man, that's hard. I have to be vulnerable. I'm not sure I'm willing to go that deep. Let's just keep it surface. Isn't it easier sometimes just to keep things surface? But 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 says, You, again, Paul talking to Timothy, however, have followed my teaching. Not only my teaching, but my conduct, the good and the bad, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, my suffering that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. In other words, Paul shared his life completely with Timothy, even the hard things. And I get it. There are mental objections. There there are real barriers for us to think about pouring ourselves. You might think to yourself, well, I'm not worthy, or I don't have anything to give, or I could never do what Paul did. I'm I'm no Paul. (laughs) You know, I, I don't have the time, or there's no one that would even care. And can I just encourage you that that is absolutely false? You and I are all, we are all treasures. We all have treasure chests full of experiences. Our family background, our successes, our failures, our opportunities, the places we visit, have visited, the list could go on and on. And so all those objections that are creeping into your mind right now, they are overruled in Jesus' name. There's no excuse. So how do you leverage your life so your life counts. If you're married, you say, well, my marriage is not the model marriage. (laughs) We struggle. Well, I believe your story, your marriage can make the difference in someone else's. You say, well, I'm divorced. Maybe I'm on my second or third marriage. And you think, well, I'm the last person that someone wants to listen to about uh, anything. And I would just say, you are wrong. You have more to offer, including the pain of a divorce. How many of us have ever failed somewhere? Come on, put your hands up, everybody, right? We've all failed, right? Join the club. If you failed with money, you lost it all, or you invested, or maybe you're upside down on something, you are an expert. Share the wealth of your experience. Can I get an amen? And I'll just say, I'll plug our Dave Ramsey class. It's a great opportunity to sit with others. And part of the Dave Ramsey experience is sharing your story with others around the table and iron sharpening iron. And there are three ways to get involved with Dave Ramsey. They offer a 30-day trial. They offer a six-month commitment and a one-year. Any three of those, and there's different various of ways you can do that, will get you into the class, and it will be a blessing. Maybe you've got conflict in your life with your in-laws. We don't. 
We're good, right? Good, good. But maybe with your siblings, or maybe at work, or with your kids, or maybe you've got conflict with the IRS, and you're saying, there are parts of my life I'm not interested in sharing. Listen, the failures in our lives are meant to be shared, to make others' experiences better. And I believe that you, as when you share those, it will open up opportunities for you like you've never could imagine. What about spiritually? Maybe you grew up in the church and, and uh, you think, well, I, I don't really have a testimony. I never really did anything wrong. I was uh, saying first service that I remember when driving in a car with my grandma when I was young and I was, we were in the back seat and, and I was uh, snuggled up to her and I was telling my grandma, I need a testimony. I need to drink and smoke so I can have a testimony. <laughs> And she lovingly said, no, Ben, you've got the greatest testimony. And, and, uh, and I en- embraced that. And thankfully, the Lord has helped me stay clear of some of those things. And, but, but you say, okay, all right, I don't have a testimony. Yes, you do. Or maybe you left the church and then you're coming back to the church. All of these things equip you uniquely. Maybe you've wrestled with your faith. How many of you wrestled with your faith at one time or another? Listen, what you're wrestling needs to be shared, and it will help you. If you're raising kids, we need each other, right? Maybe you have lost kids or prodigal sons or daughters, or maybe your kids are estranged. People need to know your story. It will bless others. See, human nature says that we should not share these things because they reflect poorly on our stories or on our lives. But that is exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants to isolate you, keep you, uh, keep you thinking that you're less than, but you are not. You are God's sons and daughters. And there, there are stories that you don't want to tell, and I get it. But the truth is we all learn far more from our, ours and others' mistakes and failures than our success. And so could you share your story? Could I encourage you, if there's any, uh, any encouragement, uh, to share your story? Over the last month or so, Pastor Bobby and I have met with a few people, and there's been uh, two in particular, and I won't share their stories because I or their names because I didn't get permission. But in two cases, I've literally stopped the conversation and said, we need to put a microphone in front of you. You've got to share this story. And it was part of our mentoring. We're, we're doing a pilot mentoring program kind of under the radar and hoping that in January we might see that increase. And, uh, but these stories are incredible. Your stories are incredible. The point is you are a treasure. And you might not believe it, but you are. I was thinking about you, Dad, This is my father-in-law and mother-in-law here. I've already embarrassed you probably more than you wanted this morning. And uh, you're used to it. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, you guys are matching. Is that, was that intentional? Good job. It looks great. Someone take a picture. You guys look great. But I was thinking about your story, Dad. All those years in business, you have got a wealth of encouraging and pouring into a young business person's life. And I know you're experiencing some pain and there's others that are, have that chronic pain and your story. And I know you've embraced that at times, but I just want to encourage you to do it again. You are a treasure. Yeah, amen? Yeah, amen. And I know the struggle is real. And there's one more concern that we probably all have at least one of these, a skeleton or two in our closet. There are things that on the surface we might think, if I shared this or that, it would disqualify me, or no one would want to listen, no one would want to be my friend. But can I just encourage you not to bury those stories? Because if you bury those skeletons, your life's impact will end when you pass These stories must be told, and they become a gateway to our souls and others. 
And I know there's a good, appropriate disclosure, and certainly there's, you just don't want to sh- you know, s- spread it all out. Get some wisdom before you share. But the point is, is share your story. And I believe that we are happiest and we are healthiest when we are helping others, when we're walking alongside of someone or we're pouring into someone. And so let's talk about our life. Let's talk about our marriages and about our kids and our business and about our prayer life and about our temptations. Proverbs seventeen seventeen says, A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. The idea is that there are things that we're going to go through and we need each other. Proverbs 27, 17, we said it last week, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And let me just say, if you choose to pour your life into someone else, you will be glad that you did. I believe out of the three messages, this one is the most important and the hardest, but the, mo- the one that will reap the most benefit in your life. And I get it. For some of you, it's hard. For me, I've kind of got a built-in. I get to pour myself out, right, every week in the pulpit. And that, and, and that, it, but I need to be intentional even outside of the pulpit, just like you do as well. And we tell our stories for the sake of the gospel. And could I just speak to those that are older among us? And Jessica, you're not going to like this, but I'm just going to say everyone 45 years old and older, because I'm 45, I'm not telling you how old Jessica is, but she's in that category. The older you and I get, the more we have to share. That's the truth. Each of us have a unique insight, wisdom, perspective, experience. Extraordinary value. When I look at you, I think, wow, look what God has done. And what really matters in life is really what we give away. The value of our life is always determined by how much of it was given away. So if you don't give away your story, it will end up with you and you alone. Let's put that diagram back up, the Paul into the Barnabas into the Timothy. And this, uh, this, pawn, or this idea is, is interesting, that if Paul is pouring into you, and then there's no outlet, there's no way for you to give, you will become stagnant like a pond. And how many have ever been by a marsh or a pond that has no outlet? Water comes in and then just sits. It becomes stinky and smelly. And if you are being poured into by a Paul and you are not pouring into others like Paul modeled, you will become smelly, stinky, and you don't want that. I was thinking, who do we respect most in our lives? It's those that push us to the limit, push us to that potential, and then push us even beyond it. And I think about it, uh, it doesn't always feel good to be pressed and to be pushed. But listen, when for me, when someone's done that for me, I appreciate that long term. And there's growth in the result. And the same can be true when you push or prod. I'm going to ask the worship team to join me. And I've got one final question. And I'm going to ask that you would stand as we consider this question. Who do you and I need to lovingly push to give a nudge? Who in our life do we need to pour into? I believe the Holy Spirit right now can can drop a name or two in your life. Especially for those that are 45 years old and older. We need to pursue a Timothy and pour into them, train up a Timothy. And actually that should happen at every stage. So the teenagers in the room, and I know there's a bunch of them today, listen, you should be pouring into someone. Maybe it's one of the kids in uh, Gateway Kids or someone else in your life that you're rubbing shoulders with. You should be giving of yourself because when you give at this age, it's easier later on. Young adults, you should be giving to those that are younger than you, to the teens. And adults should be pouring into young adults. And older adults should be pouring in along the way. 
And I was thinking about this, and I shared this with Jessica, that who has poured into our lives? You know, who has invested in us? And early on, for Jessica, it was a youth pastor's wife. Her name is Lisa DeMusto. Lisa poured into Jessica's life, and I am grateful because it, she took Jessica to a different level. There was a different level of expectation. There was a different level of accountability. And Jessica, can I be so bold? You and I, we've got to be pouring into someone else as well. We got to do it again. We got to do it again. See, there needs to be willing students. We want to be Timothys that are, can be poured into. But then it flips, and we also become the trustworthy teacher. In church, we've got a whole list of connect groups for this season. They're on the back table. Uh, you can grab one of these. You can go online and register, get going right now. And it takes about two minutes to to sign up for one of these. You say, do I really need to sign up or can I just show up? Well, you can show up, but you're going to cause a hassle because we weren't planning on you. And every one of these groups, we need to know who's coming. So how many chairs, how much refreshment, how many tables are needed, so on and so how much child care is needed, so on and so forth. But can I just let you know that we've got a group of, of classes, of connect groups here that are going to bless you that are going to help you put what we've learned over the last couple weeks into practice. I just want to walk through these. On Sunday nights, it says 6 o'clock here, but it's actually 6.30. We've actually connected with all the uh, parents through uh, text and email. It's 6.30 on Sunday nights. The Gateway Youth, our youth leaders, are going to be pouring into your students. I promise you, you want your kids there. 6.30 on Sunday nights. Then on Monday nights, if you've ever thought Bobby is good looking and you want to grow a beard like him, he's got a beard growing class. No, just kidding. It's called Starting Point, not starting a beard. But, uh, but it's about our faith and about growing in our faith. And I'll tell you, uh, this class, Bobby and I have talked about it. He's, you've taught this probably a half a dozen times. And it's one of the favorite classes that Bobby's ever taught. And it will bless you. And it's not just for new believers. It's about anyone that wants to take their faith seriously. And especially in light of being a Timothy. Like they will, you will teach. And then those that are there will be able to share and be a Timothy or pour into a Timothy as well. On Monday nights also, we got Financial Peace University. There's three ways to sign up. It's all online through their, through their website, but it's right here at the Gateway Church. We got child care for that. There's no excuse. And we want to offer Financial Peace University on a regular basis every year as part of our Connect Group series because we believe in you and your finances, and uh, we want to pull the best out of each other. Amen? Amen. Tuesday mornings, we've got a men's breakfast with Bob Boss. And Bob Boss is sharing their uh, serving in the back. Go ahead and stand up and give us a good wave. Uh, Bob Boss, 7 o'clock, it's a men's group. And then later that day, Tuesday, at 10 o'clock, the women will be with Dorothy Peterson. And did it, Dorothy. I mean, I know we clapped for you before, but Dorothy, go ahead and stand up. Oh, you are standing. No, oh, just kidding, just kidding. I told you I wasn't going to do that again, but I just did. Shoot. I love you. Anyway, Tuesday mornings with Dorothy. She's going to bless you. She's going to pour her life into you, and you're going to be able to pour your life into others. Tuesday night, 630, uh, we've got Making Life Disciples. Amber Wilder, where's Amber? Give us a wave here. And uh, Amber is going to be uh, working with, uh, with the... Uh, positive option group. And this is a group, we talked about it last week, but if you missed it, uh, this is a group that's going to help you to walk with someone, like a Barnabas, and uh, someone that's walking through trauma or crisis, and it's going to help you to be equipped to do that. It's an awesome class, Making Life Disciples. And then my daughter, Reagan, over here, just give us a wave. This is Reagan, and uh, she is going to be walking through the book Radical. And uh, Reagan, we've talked about this, but I've read this book twice, and both times it rocked my world. It's an incredible book, and Reagan is an incredible person. And she asked us, hey, could I have a small group at our house? And so if you want to come over to my house, 
Tuesday nights, the doors are open. No child care. Jessica said no, and I said no too. <laughs> Not throwing you under the bus, but uh, but that but uh, we we man, it's an incredible incredible book, and it's going to be an incredible group. Uh, let me continue. Wednesday uh, mornings, every other week, man camp. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, and then Wednesday nights, you're saying, man, where do I fit? I don't. I, maybe none of these fit. Wednesday night prayer from 7 to 8 is the most important hour of the week. And the growth, the momentum that we're experiencing is a direct result from prayer and Wednesday nights at uh, 7. And you can go to another class and still come to prayer. Uh, We want you to be praying with us. And then at 6.30 on Wednesday nights, Jessica and I, are we feel compelled where we hit that 45 and above and we're saying we've got something to give and we want to just love on parents and like we've been loving on the students uh, and we, we're going to do that in this season and we're just going to strengthen each other. But again, we need you to sign up. It takes about two minutes. In fact, during the final song, you could get your phone out and probably do it. And we do that because we believe. And let me just say, if none of these groups work, uh, you don't have to go to an official group to make sense. Create your own group. It could be unofficial. It doesn't have to run through the Gateway Church. But the point is, be a Paul, pursue a Paul, have a Barnabas, and pour into a Timothy. And your life will be benefited. Last thought, and then Pastor Bobby, you can lead us. I have it in big bold here, and I think it, we have a, a slide to match. What I want you to walk away with is the idea that we are called, all of us, to pursue a Paul, to be a Barnabas, and then to train up a Timothy. And then to do it again and again and again. We say it with me, and again and again and again. Father, I pray that you'd help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord as we conclude before we're dismissed. forces us to lean into you. That it breaks beyond knowing about you. And it goes to knowing you. Jesus, we thank you for that mystery. We thank you for times where we don't have the answers, where we don't know everything so much to learn on top of so much to share and we thank you that in those moments of mystery that it causes us to lean into you but it also causes us to lean into others as well that when I don't have all the answers when I don't know where to go when I don't have the experience that I can look to others that have been there that have another background another experience that maybe see things a different way than I see them. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that whenever I don't know the answer, I don't know where to go, whenever I'm caught up in the mystery, whenever I'm in the unknown, that I can lean into you and I can lean into your people. Jesus, I thank you that we are better together. Jesus, I thank you for your friendship you've shown me how to be a better friend, that you've shown me how to be better to others and to love them well. And we just thank you that we are truly better together. 
And so we pray that you would just challenge us, that you would encourage us, that you would remind us of of the perspectives that we have, the things that we can share, the experiences that we've gone through are all in order to give you glory. So use those experiences, use those talents, use those gifts, because they're yours anyway. Jesus, and we thank you that as we lean into the mystery, as we lean into community, that you are with us, that you are before us, you are behind us, you are with us, you are all around us every single step of the way. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory and honor. It's in your name we pray and everyone together says, amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for service. Uh, You can go, but also we have... 12.30. 12.30. So we have nine minutes and we will be having our business meeting for all of our members uh, and the rest of you. uh, You're welcome to stay or go in the grace of God. Thank you for listening to this week's message from the Gateway Church. If you'd like to find out more about our church, such as service times, giving, and ways to get connected, visit us at thegateway.church.